The new anniversary edition of Skyrim is out, so of course that means it's time to roll a fresh character. Let's take a look at some tips and tricks to get a jump start on a new Dovahkin. So, welcome, probably welcome back, um, to the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Um, as you're probably aware, the anniversary edition uh, of the game just came out because this game has been around for a decade now and just refuses to go anywhere and is still amazing. And uh, like a lot of other people, I kind of got sucked back in for uh, a new character. And I figured this would be a good opportunity to make a quick video and show you the method I use, sort of my cookie cutter opening that I do with new characters, um, to get started in the very early stages of the game, and also to showcase some of the new content that's available in the Anniversary Edition. Um, this is not going to be a comprehensive guide to all of the new content that's available. It's more aimed at you know, sort of setting up the, the start that I use for my characters. Um, however, we are going to take a look at some of the new stuff like fishing in the survival mode uh, that was added in and was previously only available as a Creation Club download. So with that said, let's get to it. What's wrong with him, huh? Who are you? So for our character, we're going to go with a, a pretty generic Nord here. Um, I'm not going to customize him too much just for uh, for this save. All I'm really going to do to start off is we're going to give him darker hair and clean up his facial hair a little bit. Let's give him a nice little circle beard. There we go. Yeah, decent enough. Simple guy. And uh, we'll give him a, a good strong Nord name about um Vorek. There we go. There's there's a good Nord name. You picked a bad time to come home to Skyrim, Kinsman. Yeah, it's Captain, always a bad time to come what home to Skyrim. Do? He's not on the list. Forget the list. He goes to the block. All right. We'll I go to the block for the thousandth time. I'm sorry. At least you'll die here in your home. Okay, so I always like to uh, kind of skip through the opening here, um, or at least run through relatively quickly, uh, having seen that a million times. But if uh, by some off chance it is actually your first time playing, um, there's more to see during this intro. You can interact with some people and go through this a little bit more slowly. Um, and the first real choice you have to make in the game um, it's kind of at this point here. You either choose to go with Raloff, um, the Stormcloak, or Hadvar, the Imperial. Now, I always choose to go with Hadvar, even if I'm going to join the Stormcloaks later, and there's a reason for that. Um, when you get into the first town of Riverwood, you get an NPC that gives you some assistance, and which one you get is based upon which one of these guys you go with at the beginning of the game. Um, we should keep if you go with Hadvar and choose the Imperial side here at the very start, uh, it's the blacksmith who gives you some free assistance. And there's a bunch of iron and silver ingots on the ground at his blacksmith forge that you can pick up for free without them counting as stolen or anything if you go with Hadvar at the beginning. Um, and those, those blacksmithing supplies... Um, will automatically replenish over time. And, uh, you know, you can, you can go back every few days and get a bunch of free iron and steel, um, which really ends up being a, a huge boost, you know, over the course of the game. Um, if you go with the Stormcloaks, the NPCs you get in the town don't really give you anything that compares... Um, long term to the absolutely ridiculous amount of free metal um, the ingots that you can get from the blacksmith. So that's why I go with the Imperials even if I'm going to play uh, a Stormcloak character, you know, after we get out of the starting area here. Um, so that's, that's really the story with that. Also, if you go with the Imperials, these first couple of uh, Stormcloaks that you fight have two-handed weapons. 
Um, and I'm planning on doing this character as a two-handed weapon warrior build. So I'm going to go with that Iron Great Sword, and it's convenient to have a weapon that suits the, the play style I'm going to be going for right off the bat. So with that, we're going to clip here and get out of the little starting sequence. One other thing to mention real quick on the way out, uh, I prefer to play like sort of a low-leveled game um, with very slow character progression. There's so much content in Skyrim. Um, you know, I, I like to actually be able to experience more than just a couple of quest lines while I'm leveling. Um, and I find that, you know, if I'm at, like, level 60 by the time I'm getting done with my, like, second or third guild, um, it detracts from the gameplay. However, you know, if you want to level up quicker, there's an amazing trick you can do here. Um, here in the first cave, there's this bear. You can crouch and just sort of move yourself to be moving into this nook and, um, you know, just put something on your keyboard so that you're just walking here. And uh, eventually, you will slowly gain experience through leveling your sneak skill. Um, and if you, if you leave yourself sitting here just moving into that wall, you know, and there's, this isn't the only little nook you can do it in, but, you know, moving into that wall in the presence of that bear um, for, you know, a few hours, you can gain as many levels as you have the time for. Um, you know, if you, if you leave your character there going overnight, you can get to, like, level 20 before you even leave the starting cave. Uh, but I don't do that. I just wanted to show that it's possible in case you didn't know or had forgotten. Okay, so when you first exit the cave, you're going to get prompted um, for survival mode. You're going to get this little box here asking you if you want to turn on survival mode. We're going to start with turning survival mode on. Um you know, really just to demonstrate what it's all about. Uh, however, if you want to turn it off, you can do it, as it says here, from the gameplay settings menu. So, and I'm carrying too much to run, so let's do something about that. Uh, I'm not going to need these iron battle axes. Now, again, when you turn on survival mode, um, your maximum uh, carry weight goes down significantly. So, if you decide to turn it on, you're going to have to dump a whole bunch of this dead weight that you're carrying around from the beginning of the game. Um, if you want to play on the survival mode, one other thing you can do is wait until you get to uh, Riverwood, the first town, um, and clear out a bunch of the stuff with the vendors so that, you know, you're not just, like, throwing away the money. Um, that's something you can do and turn on um, survival mode after you do that. A very important difference right away with survival mode, arrows have weight, um, so you can't just run around carrying like 2,000 arrows um, without any, any burden whatsoever, so that's a thing. Um, and also, all of your, your apparel, or most of it, has an additional stat called warmth, um, because with survival mode, you, you literally have to stay warm out in the cold. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Your stats on your armor and clothing uh, matter for more than just raw weight. Uh, you notice, for example, here, hovering over the fur gauntlets down in the bottom, it shows me my warmth rating will go up in addition to my armor rating. So, you know, you need to care about more than just armor. Now, what we're going to do here, yeah, Nothing we'll talk to Hadvar, he's going to keep moving. Um, he's going to give me the quest Looks to like uh, head into Riverwood, but we're not going to do that just yet. I don't think we should uh, but if you look in the on the back. top, you know, on our little Moses compass bar, we've got a little sun um, off to the right. That's showing us that it's warm out, and that'll change to like a snowflake thing um, if it's cold. And if we go for too long, uh, cold, hungry, and without sleep, um, we lose maximum, um, uh, maximum magicka, health, and stamina, respectively. So... That's something we have to keep in mind. But what I always do here at the start of the game, most people tend to head right and sort of go down towards Riverwood. I don't. I always go left, and I go over towards this little hut called Pine Watch. And there's a number of reasons for that. Um, I'm going to be coming back to Pine Watch later. And again, if you're not playing with survival mode, um, and you can use fast travel and everything... It's very useful to tag this location uh, early on because it makes it really easy to come back here and run over to Falkreath for the first time without needing to, you know, pay for the wagon uh, early in the game. 
and also one of the locations of the first um, the first player housing uh, plots that you can get to build a house on is kind of right near here. So coming over this way, really, oh, now here we go, we're getting hunger. But coming over this way just saves us time later. Now here it's showing us that we're hungry. It's going to reduce our total stamina until we eat and get fed up. And <laughs> eating raw meat can lead to food poisoning, so that's, that's something to be aware of as well. Um, that's not going to matter a whole lot immediately, but in a little while we are actually going to need some food. And, and it's not going to hit. Alright, but so I've got Pine Watch discovered here, and there's really nothing going on. Um, if you care to, you can, you can unlock the door and go in. There's a bandit in there you can kill, uh, but we're going to ignore that. And we're going to go over the hill behind Pine Watch. Grab some snowberries. And we've got some... There's usually some wolves over here. Um, these are good for some wolf pelts. Uh, leather is definitely something that matters early on in the game, so we're going to want to grab some of that. And we'll cut these guys down. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, there's another one. Yeah, you run away. All right, so we chopped up some wolves. And let's go back. It looks like they were, uh, yeah, munching on an elk. We're going to grab that venison. We'll uh, use that later. Now, one of the reasons I come over this way is we're actually going to grab a unique item. Um, right over the side of this hill is uh, a dead lumberjack. Woodcutter. And there's this axe, the woodsman's friend. Um, it's not an especially powerful piece, piece of equipment, but it's, uh, it's unique, and it can actually be a minor upgrade at the very beginning of the game. Um, however, you'll replace that immediately uh, after getting a, a steel a steel broadsword there, um, a steel greatsword. So from here, um, I always go over to this uh, little wizard camp and fight this guy. Now, new in the anniversary edition are these bone wolf enemies. Sometimes these are here, sometimes they're not. We'll kill this novice conjurer and his dogs. And we'll see what he's got for me. He's got some robes. And we'll uh, grab our book here and gain a point of conjuring. Oh, and we're already overburdened. So that's uh, definitely something that you're going to want to be aware of. That's going to happen quite a bit playing in survival mode. Because that reduction to your, your maximum carry weight is a real serious problem early on. Um, and it's only partially alleviated by the uh, the backpacks that you can craft and we'll we'll take a look at that when we get to Riverwood. Uh, but the next thing I always do is I come around up this road and I kill these bandits at this encampment to grab treasure map one. Um, as you're probably aware, there's a, a hidden treasure chest in a log over on the other side of the river uh, right near here. and the hidden treasure chests only actually show up if you have and have read the treasure map to find them. So I'm going to cut these guys down real quick. There we go. Nothing like a good Nord head. All right. And this guy also has some armor. So I'm going to load up on that. And that hunting bow, I believe, is an upgrade. So I'm going to do a little bit of menuing and sort out my inventory here. And I will fast forward through this part for you. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to make sure that we read the treasure map one at least once, and that'll that'll cause that to spawn. This is also a good spot. Grab some food. Oop. 
sometimes he's got my arrow back in there. And we'll check this guy. He's got a lock pick. That's always good to have. All right, so let's uh, have some apples. All right. Oh, I contracted food poisoning. Yeah, I accidentally clicked and ate that raw venison. Um, so that's a problem. Now I'm poisoned. But I'll just have to kind of deal with that. Walk it off. No big deal. Walk it off. So from here, I go over to the Standing Stones. Um, I skip the uh, the Ember Shard Mine over there at the start of the game. And the reason for that is, if you haven't discovered it, um, it can be one of the locations that the Jarl of Falkreath can give you uh, to go kill the bandits. Um, and that's a very easy dungeon, and it's useful and easy to get to from these places we already have discovered. Um, so it saves a little bit of a trip if uh, that ends up being the, the dungeon you get from the Jarl. So I always leave that undiscovered for right now. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to cross the river, and we're going to go up to Anissa's cabin. And there's a couple of reasons we're going to go here right off the bat. Um, the first of which is Anissa's cabin... Um, Aside from having some stuff in it, oh, got wolves. Aside from having some stuff in it that I want to take, um, and of course, anything you take from here is going to be stolen. By the way, uh, this all ends up serving as my first player home. Now, if you haven't really been through here before, you talk to this lady. She seems like just some old lady hanging out in the woods. Got a little cabin. Um, she's got some alchemy supplies you can steal if you're into stealing. The only thing I'm going to end up stealing later is that vegetable soup in a minute. Uh, she's got a book. You can gain some alchemy by doing that. Notice there's an owned bed. And, oh, dresser we can steal from if we want to. But down here is a cellar. So that's a novice lock. We're going to unlock that real quick. Look at that second try. Now, down here is an alchemy lab and an enchanter. Um, if you got lucky and you picked up any enchanted stuff uh, early on, you can disenchant it here. And that's always really good and important to do, especially early on. Enchanting is a very important stat over the course of the game. And you want to read, uh, while you're down here, Anissa's letter. You don't have to steal it, you just want to read it. Um, what this will do is it'll expose the lady upstairs as a witch trying to start a coven. So when you go back up, she is going to attack me. And, uh, well take care of that without a lot of difficulty. None know my secret. There we go. That's right. All right. So now we have some free food we can take, and that will eventually come back over time. But the other good thing is this now the bed is no longer owned. Um, this becomes a player house. Now, <laughs> coincidentally, this fatigue window came up. Um, showing us that we can sleep in a bed to reduce our fatigue. And uh, while we are fatigued, we're going to have the dark region in the man Magicka Bar. So we can actually sleep here for a couple hours if we want to. Now, because we're in survival mode, we only level up when we sleep. That's another reason why it's kind of important to do this early. So I'm going to do some health. That'll be a quick heal, and I'm not going to do any perks or anything. So now, when we go back into the cellar, this is important. Um, this cupboard here that it's offering me the chance to steal from is a protected chest. So I can put stuff in here. I can, I can dump some of the stuff in here. And that'll be there if I come back for it later. Um, the contents of this chest will not end up getting reset. So Anissa's cabin here that we just cleared out and she never comes back, so this stays empty indefinitely. Has an alchemy lab, an enchanter, a protected chest that is, that is safe to put things in, and it has a bed. So this actually kind of ends up serving as our first player house, um, and is really good to use as a convenient player house early on in the game, uh, before you've unlocked any of the others. So what I'm going to do here is go through... I don't remember where that stuff was. Yeah, I had, had a bunch of stolen stuff. I'm just going to dump it. Alright. 
So now the other thing we want to do while we're here, um, and it's the other reason we go to Anissa's cabin as kind of one of our early destinations, um, there's an emerald hidden in a skeleton over here. Now let me see if I can remember where this is. Here we go. Uh, there's a little, there's this skeleton there on the ground, and we have a flawless emerald, um, which is worth 750. So that's, that's good to take. That's a quick boost of gold early on. And if we go over this little ridge here, um, we're going to get to that first treasure chest. Now you're also going to notice um, in our compass bar up to the top left, uh, we have the little snowflake. That's showing us that it's cold outside. Um, that's part of the, you know, the new survival mode that's got added in. And it shows us that, you know, if we don't have warm clothing on, or like, if we don't walk around carrying a torch or something to stay warm, um, we'll eventually start to, you know, start to get some hypothermia, so that's not good. Now, here is that first treasure chest, and this is, you, you don't ever want to miss this. Um, this chest would not be here if we had not read that treasure map one we got from those bandits at the start. So there's a lot of good stuff in that treasure chest, as you can see there, gems, ingots. Um, inconsequential in the long run, but at the very beginning of the game, uh, that stuff is a real quick boost. That'll allow us to do some additional crafting if we wanted to, for example, make some arrows um, here in Riverwood. And uh, we can also sell those gems. That's also, uh, you know, pretty important. Now, I'm going to show you what I was talking about at the beginning, the reason we went with the Imperials. We're going to uh, talk to Alvor here and ask him if he has any supplies I can take. And I'm just going to clean him out, because why not? All right. Thank you. Dragon attacked. That explains what I Go saw. through our dialogue options here. And again, I'm, I'm kind of skipping through this, but if you're new to the game, or if you haven't played in a while, um, you know, maybe you want to want to go through that pretty slow. Um, you can also go through the quick little intro uh, to have him, to have Alvor show you how to use the forge. Uh, that'll get you blacksmithing up a few points and get you some quick free items. However, what we're really here for is this. These ingots, because we went with the Imperials at the very beginning, are free, and those two piles of ingots will respawn over time. So over the course of the game, um, you know, you can go back there literally like every couple of days uh, of in-game time, and those ingots will be respawned. So that's very useful, especially early on. Uh, one of the things I like to do is to come over here, and grab this woodcutter's axe. And uh, I'm gonna chop some wood and craft some arrows real quick before I leave Riverwood here. And uh, I will fast forward through this. Okay, now I've uh, taken some time and cleared out my inventory, sold that um, flawless emerald and um, did my errands here in Riverwood. But there's one thing I wanna show you before we leave. Uh, you wanna make sure after you go through the dialogue options with the blacksmith, you want to buy one corundrum ingot. It's going to be expensive, but you need that. And the reason you need that is you want to come over here and you want to craft yourself a backpack. It doesn't really matter which one. Um, you know, first, uh, first part of the game, these are basically all going to be the same. Um, however, by crafting yourself a backpack, you get an extra 75 points of carrying capacity. So, early on, that ends up being a huge boost. And the backpack will show up under apparel. So again, uh, you're going to notice our carry weight just went up to 225. Um, that's pretty important in survival mode. So, as we're heading out of Riverwood, we're going to get a chance to check out one of the other things that's been added into... Uh, into Skyrim, Skyrim with the Anniversary Edition. First, it's, uh, it's got these fish. And that is fishing. So we can take this fishing rod. Don't buy one in the town because there's a free one here. And there's a book we can read all about fishing. And the way fishing works is uh, in these places where you find buckets of uh, raw chum hanging out on the ground. And only at the places where you find this, um, you can equip your fishing pole and click the fishing supplies 
and it'll bring you into this interface where literally um, you just throw your line out and you wait a minute until uh, the fish start tugging and then you click your action button to reel it all back in. And it's just as exciting as fishing in real life. Okay, so there we just caught a fish. Um, and as you can see, it, it started a quest uh, to visit the Riften fishery. Uh, I'm not going to go through that here, but if you go and you do that quest, um, it'll bring you through uh, a, a sequence to like go catch a bunch of rare fish uh, from all over Skyrim. And that, you know, that can be a, a fun little diversion. Um, also, fishing can be a good source of meat. Uh, again, we're in survival mode, so we need food. Speaking of which, our stamina is already going down. Um, while I was in town, I went to the inn and I, I literally just bought some food. So, we're going to want to do that. And take care of these wolves. Now from here, um, we're going to make our way over this mountain. Some people uh, take, the, take the road down to the right. I usually don't bother. I just come right over the top, uh, making our way over to Whiterun. Really, um, the only reason I come this way is just that it's a bit quicker. It saves us a little bit of time of uh, transit around through the woods. And depending on what difficulty setting you're on and all that, um, you can occasionally get a chance to fire a pot shot with your bow at this giant that the companions are fighting uh, out here in the farm. And if you're able to get a hit on the giant, it's risky because sometimes you'll hit the companions. But if you're able to... Yep, there we go. We got a hit on the giant, which is going to allow me to loot him when I run over here. And occasionally he'll have something on him that ends you up mattering. Yourself well. Yes, I don't you care about you for right shield, now. Brother. Okay, he didn't have anything, but sometimes he'll have like a giant's toe or some, um, some other loot that you can actually take. Um, and if you're interested in starting a quest chain to join the companions, you can talk to Ayla the Huntress there, and uh, she'll get you started with that, and you can eventually become a werewolf if you go with those guys. I'm not going to be doing that right now, but it's uh, good to know that that's where it starts. The first thing we're going to do, before we even go into Whiterun, we're going to discover the stables, and we are going to talk to uh, Bjorlam here. We are going to hire his carriage... And we are going to go to Solitude. And, back and, we'll be off. and there's a method in the madness. We are going to go pick up the Steed Stone to increase our carry weight. Um, I do this at the beginning of every save uh, because early on, it's you know it's extremely important to be able to go into some of the early dungeons and haul all of this loot back uh, while you're still broke and starving for money. So the Steed Stone will dramatically help with that. Now I always go discover the farm so we can come back to that later. I'm going to need to eat some food. Got some horker loaf. Now to get to the steed stone. Oh, now here we go. It's showing us that we're cold, right? You see we've got the little snowflake in the upper left there. Um, reduces our total health. So literally this is exactly what it looks like. Uh, if you don't stay warm, it'll reduce your maximum health um, until you warm up. So that's an issue, uh, especially in some of the, you know, the, the later parts of the game um, where you're isolated and you don't really have the ability to, like, you know, run back and buy torches or change out your equipment or anything like that. So if you're doing survive mode with anniversary edition, uh, you make sure you want to plan ahead for warmth. Um, it also makes torches much more relevant. Uh, you're going to want to always make sure to have a few of those with you so that you can carry them around and stay a little bit warmer if you need be. So I am going to fast forward a bit through this part here. We're literally just going to go up this road and hook a right, and that will bring us up the mountain to grab the Steed Stone. And one thing I usually do on my way, I come through here and I tag the uh, statue of Meridia there. 
Um, that can be useful to come back to later, you know, if we're not in survival mode and we want to do fast travel once we uh, start the quest with the beacon and get the Dawnbreaker sword. Always a fun weapon and always good to have that location tagged to come back later on. And let's keep heading up towards the Steedstone. Okay, so here um, we've discovered and activated the Steed Stone. And if you're not familiar with this one, um, it increases your carry weight and you don't get a movement penalty from suffer um, from wearing armor. So as a heavy armor uh, character, that's going to be uh, a really important thing for uh, Vorik here to have. And from this point on, um, this is this opening sequence that I just went through is basically what I do with every new character that I roll. Um, and so from here on out, it's uh, back to White Run to begin the rest of the game. And uh, as always, thanks for watching.